Welcome to Literatura. And for today's episode, we're going to talk about the period of the new society. And for that, we have a very special guest with us today. Let's all welcome the author of the best-selling novel HTSH and the professor herself, Miss Rose C. Chu. Hello everyone! Hi River. Thanks for having me here today. Thank you for gracing us with your time today, Miss Rose. We know that you were quite busy during these days, especially these days. Well, you know, I'm not really busy for this kind of things. <laughs> it was your field of expertise after all. So, Miss Rose, can you tell us about what was this period of new society is all about? So, yeah, the period of the new society. The period of the new society started in September 21st, of 1972 kind of sounds familiar right oh that's that was when the martial law under the president uh, marcos dictatorship started right you're right this period had brought both positive and negative impacts in the field of literature though there wasn't much changes in the novels short stories and plays essays comics and debates have been quietly known during this period themes used during this period were commonly dealt with the progress and the development of the country, such as the Green Revolution, Family Planning, Proper Nutrition, Environment, Drug Addiction, and Pollution. They also tried to stop pornography and other writings that gives off a negative impact or bad influences on the moral of the people. At this period, military government established a new office called the Ministry of Public Affairs that supervised the newspapers, books, and other publications. Government took part in reviving old plays such as the Sinaculo, the Sarsuela, and Imbayoka of the Muslims. The cultural center of the Philippines, the folk arts theater, and even the old metropolitan theater were rebuilt to have a venue for the plays. So, singing in both Filipino and English songs during this period also received fresh incentives. Those that were sent abroad promoted many Filipino songs. Weekly publications such as Kislap and BYY also help a lot in the development of literature. However, school newspapers have been stopped during this period as well as the school's organization. Bilingual education, which was initiated by the Board of National Education as early as 1958 and continued up to the period of martial law in September 21, 1972, results in the deterioration of English in different levels of education. Education and culture was focused on problems of national identity, on reorientation, renewed vigor, and the firm results to carry out plans and programs. Seems like a lot really happened during this time. So how about the literature? Uh, how about the Filipino poetry during this time? about the patient's regard for native culture, customs, the beauties of the surroundings and environment. So a few months after the declaration of the military rule, slogans could be heard and read by many people such, such as, Sa ikawunan ng bayan, disiplina ang kailangan. Tayo kumain ng gulay upang humabang ang buhay. Magplano ng pamilya ng ang buhay ay lumikaya. Ang pagsunod sa magulang, tanda ng anak na magalang. Tayo'y magtanim Famous writers during this period were Ponciano Pineda, Anacito Salvistre, Jose Garcia Revelo, Buenvenido Ramos, Vicente de Masalang, Sir Lopez Francisco, Pelagio Sulemus. Well, as for composers, Freddy Aguilar, Jose Marichan, and Tito Vic and Joey were the famous composers. You might be familiar with Anak, right? Well, during that time, Anak was an instant success and it was even translated into Japanese and other languages. Slims like poetry have made flores during this time. They even use it for rooms. Um, so, you have said earlier that 
place have been revived. Can you talk more about that? That's true. Government revived plays and dramas, which were presented in the rebuilt Metropolitan Theater, the Folk Arts Theater, and the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Some of the revived plays include the Tagalog Sarsuela, Sinacolo, and Bayoka of the Muslims. The schools also presented plays during this time, such as the Mindanao State University, which presented the play Sinning in Bayoka at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. In 1977, the Tales of Manuvu, a new style of rock of the ballet opera, was performed by Celeste Legaspi, Leia Navarro, Haji Alejandro, Boy Camara, Anthony Castello, Ray Dizon, and choreographed by Alice Reyes. Even the president's daughter at the time participated as a performing artist in the principal role of Santa Juana of Coral and in the Diary of Anne Frank. Organizations also contributed in the development of the place during this time, such, period, such as the PETA of Cecil Guidote and Lina Broca, Repertory Philippines of Rebecca Godinez and Zenaida Amador, UP Repertory of Ben Cervantes, and Teatro Filipino by Rolando Tinio. So aside from theatrical plays, is there any other forms of entertainment during this, present during this period? Yes. During this time, songs were played in radios as well as series such as Such as Simatar, Dahlia, Ito Ang Palad Ko, and Mr. Lonely. However, man performing artists in radio move over to television because of higher pay, such as Augusto Vieta, Jenny Palomo, Meli Tagasa, Inapusing, and Esther Chavez. Popular television plays were Gulong ng Palad, Flor de Luna, and Annalisa. Superman and Tarzan were popular with the youth. So I guess this was the time where radio and television plays were born. Well, it wasn't the only one that was born during this period. A yearly pista ng mga pelikulang Pilipino. Or the yearly Filipino Film Festival was held and lasted for almost a month. Only Filipino films were shown in all theaters in Metro Manila. Prizes and trophies were awarded at the end of festival in recognition of excellence in filmmaking and in role performances. New kind of films without sex or romance is started to be made. Among these were Maynila sa mga koko ng liwanag, written by Edgardo Reyes and directed by Lino Broca, with Bembol Rocco as the lead role. Minsay isang gamugamo on where Nora Honor was the principal performer. Ganito kami noon, paano kami ngayon, led by Christopher De Leon and Gloria Diaz. In Siang by Hilda Coronel. And Aguila, led by Fernando Poe Jr., J. Ilagan, and Christopher De Leon. Sex films could not be shelved. Films, either local or foreign, that deals with bold themes were the vehicles of producers to earn money. Well, now I'm thinking if the Metro Manila Film Festival originated from this. Was, was, it, was it anchored to this? <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Now I'm quite curious about the publication during this time. As we know, during those time, the government doesn't really want to be criticized. But they stop on making the newspapers because, you know, without press freedom. Well, actually, they don't stop publishing. Reading papers during this period, The Bulletin Today, Times Journal, People's Journal, Balita, Filipino Express, Philippine Daily Express, Evening Post, and Evening Express. Leading magazines during this period were Liwayway, Kislap, Bulaklak, Extra Hot, and Jingle Sensation. While the leading comic comics magazine, while the leading comics magazine during this period were Filipino, Extra, Overlife, Hiwaga, Classic, and Special. However, you must note that the news about the progress, the discipline, the culture, tourism, and the likes were favored more than the sensationalized uh, reportings of killings, rape, and robberies. It looks like literature had really blossomed during this period. They even divide plays, theaters, and there are uh, other forms of entertainment such as magazines, radio and television series. So, I think this period was quite fascinating to me. 
was quite fascinating. I actually agree with you. Just like what I have said earlier, uh, this period has its positive and negative impacts, not just on our literature, but also on our society. Because the government tries to control the themes of the literary works, which had become a double-edged sword, in my opinion. Because they may had they may had uh, stopped the pornography, pornographic stops, but they also seized the press freedom by stopping the publication of the school newspaper and publishing works, news articles which uh, tackles the rapes, killings, which had been very prominent during those times. So I think it is just a matter of one's perception on whether it was it had more uh, negative or positive impacts. Nevertheless, it is undoubtedly the period of the new society. Couldn't agree more. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. It was very informative and fun. I hope we could invite you next time, Miss Rose. Always welcome, neighbor. I'm, it's my pleasure to be here. So once again, Miss Rose, see you through. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you all learned something from this and see you on the next one.